Hello fellow hunters, welcome to Grunge Haunts and Props. My name is Chris Leonardo and today we are finally making tombstones. Uh, I've been saving a bunch of the white styrofoam for almost a year now and we're finally ready to put these together and make just super easy, super inexpensive tombstones. Uh, I'm gonna add a couple of dollar store items to really kind of give these detail these are also made with no mess. I don't have any of the styrofoam balls all over the place. Um, we're using a hot knife to cut things. Um, most of the stuff, we're just gonna cut it and make it decorative without having to do a lot of carving, which is nice. Um, so follow along and enjoy the video. Okay, my wife has a online shopping habit. And so I save all the styrofoam from all the the Amazon boxes and everything else that we get uh, and I do it exactly for what we're gonna do today which is making tombstones so some of these I probably won't be able to use but um, I'm just gonna use white styrofoam these are gonna be super inexpensive and easy to make uh, and quick because I need a lot of gravestones or tombstones for our graveyard um, which has been lacking tombstones so um, they are gonna be easy and inexpensive but I think they're gonna look really cool so uh, I've got a couple techniques I haven't seen anywhere a um, couple items we're gonna use that I haven't seen in any other videos that I've watched um, so I think you're gonna enjoy this okay I found a couple pieces that I'm gonna use here they're just rectangles um, they are pretty long, but it's gonna be fine because I'm gonna put add some stuff to the sides and to the bottom. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is cut the top at an angle so it looks more like a tombstone. And then we will start putting some letters on here. I'm also using a gray Sharpie uh, because I don't really want it super, if it's black, it's going to kind of show through after you paint it. So, um, so I'm gonna use gray so that when I paint the tombstones gray, I don't have Sharpie marks showing through. So I bought a hot knife at uh, Harbor Freight for, it was uh, 19 bucks on clearance. So we get to use a hot knife, which will be fun. Well, that's a pretty clean cut. I'm happy with that. So I'll just do the other side. All right, now we're gonna do the next difficult task of uh, putting letters on there. So for the letters, I am just using these dollar store stickers. Um, you know, I've seen several different ways to do this. I'm doing just quick and dirty, just kind of eyeballing it. I am going to make some lines though. Okay, we got these to fit. We'll see how this goes. I'm just gonna trace out these stickers and then uh, we'll probably just have to, to wing it. Which, if you have seen my other videos, I, uh, I do that a lot, I'm winging it. Okay, so we traced all of those, and now we're gonna do Michael Myers, of course. Wondering. Let's get out the wood burning tool. Next, I'm gonna try with a soldering iron and see if that's um, a little more precise. The uh, the wood burning tool, it's going to, I think, just kind of be a little bit too erratic and fat. So we're going to do a soldering iron and see, see how it looks. I think it's working pretty well. So the Dremel is just not, with styrofoam, with the big uh, white styrofoam, the cells are very large and it's very messy, so I'm really hoping this works. 
Okay. I'm uh, pretty happy with that. Now we have to figure out how we're gonna do the numbers. Okay, so now we're just gonna make the year, uh, years of being you know, born and dead. Uh, the first Halloween was 1978, so I'm guessing it was 20 years old. Well, 1958 for birthday, and then uh, he dies in what 2022, and Halloween ends. So, uh, so yeah, 1958 to 2022 is what we'll do. So my plan to make this center is just to put the dash in first, and then we will put the years around it. That's pretty well centered. Pretty happy with that. Okay, I am going to try the wood burning tool this time. Um, I'm try to do the back side so I can have a little more fine detail on the numbers. Eh, we'll see if it works. It's, it's working. <laughs> it's not the best. I think it's going to work. That's good. Okay, that was quick. Quick and easy. Okay, now we're going to kind of put together uh, the base here. We do that with two pieces, a thin piece, and then another thicker piece underneath. So the first one, um, we are going to have pool noodles on each side. So the base is 12 pool noodles, about two inches thick. So, and we want it to hang, overhang about an inch on each side. So we're going to go with uh, 18 inches long and then four inches thick this one. The second base piece we want an inch longer, so we have four inches, and we want five inches, and 19 inches. Okay, that's pretty good. Pretty nice straight cut there. So, this should sit on top here, like so. And then, that's your face. I like that. Okay, so I like how this is looking here. We just gotta make sure we get it all centered. And as you can see, we're gonna put, put these little cool noodles on the side and just have those as kind of mini columns with uh, skulls on top. The first step we're going to do is we are going to just glue this base on and the actual stone in place before we put the pool noodles on. And uh, we'll do that next. Okay, uh, we wanna make sure this is perfectly centered here. So I am going to just draw a quick outline where it's at centered. Exactly where it needs to be when I glue it. Now we're just going to use uh, clear Gorilla Glue. This stuff is great. Um, it's water activated. Uh, water activated, so we'll just spray it down both sides. We'll put the glue on there, and then we'll stick uh, skewers. Just got these at the dollar for a big pack. Uh, skewers just to kind of hold the foam in place because it does expand a little bit. Okay, so we're just going to water each side down. And I'm going to stick a skewer on each side all the way through. And then that's it. We'll let that dry. Okay, now I got that set, I cut a couple just well, three inch. I guess trim pieces or whatever you want to call them, and uh, make the little top part here just barely sticking over the foam. And I'm just going to position this with my eyes here, and uh, this is a little kind of an overhang, like it's a decorative piece. We're not really doing much 
decorating on this or carving um, hardly any impact. So I'm gonna do this just to kind of give it a little bit of flair. Same thing, just screwing it down. All right, we're gonna let this whole thing dry and then we'll attach the uh, cool noodles. While we're waiting for all this to dry, I am gonna just do a little bit of Loctite on this. We're gonna attach this to this decorative mirror. I am gonna spray this down just a little bit just to, I might have to just push it in a little. But that's pretty much it, right? <clears throat> We have this decorative piece here that's just gonna sit. We'll glue this down after the everything else dries. Right, right there. And we didn't have to carve anything. We didn't have to get styrofoam balls and mess everywhere. And uh, it's gonna work great. Okay, for the full little uh, pillars here, I'm just gonna cut right on this line here. So one pool mural is more than enough for these two pillars. So we are going to actually put PVC through here and drill a hole in the base and put the PVC right through the column. And that's how we're going to actually stick these into the ground with rebar in the PVC. Most uh, most tombstone videos, they will they will dig a channel, or cut through the foam on the backside, or if they're laminating it in between to, to put the PVC in. We don't have to do that. We're just going to put it right through in here, and it fits perfectly. Back in the middle, and then we're going to take sharpie this and just drop it right in there and it will mark right where we need to drill a hole. There it is. We've got our spot to drill. Now we need a 7 8 inch paddle bit. Now I know this is not going to be a clean uh, cut at all. This is gonna rub this up really bad, but it's no big deal. It's gonna be covered by the cool glue on the bottom. And this is the first mess that we've made so far. Uh, I try really don't like all of this styrofoam everywhere. So, so far we haven't had to deal with it, but unfortunately we have no choice here. Okay, so I've got some just spare pieces of PVC that uh, from my cemetery fence build. So these are about two foot long. They're almost exactly perfect size here. Um, so I'm just gonna mark on here where I want to take the good mark, let's tell you really sharp. Where I'm going to put the pool noodle down to. so we can attach a little extra on the top so that we can attach the skull up here. Perfect size. <laughs> so exactly two feet is what that is. Yes, we have the pillars here. And uh, now we're ready to put skulls right on. Okay, so we casted these skulls in our silicone molds. Um, got several videos on how we did that do that uh, these are actually I'm using worth uh, so, uh, foam spray foam that's you get that from Walmart and uh, these, these were actually come out really nice um, and I can do it for about a dollar per skull the uh, <clears throat> the worth cans are only four dollars and 24 cents and I can get um, four skulls plus a little more out of it so 
It's about a dollar a skull um, with the worth spray foam. And uh, we cleaned them up a little bit. I did miscalculate here, so I've had to shave off a little bit of the skull to make it work. But um, that's really what we're going to do right there and just glue everything down. Okay, did we risk it? No, I'm gonna wait on that one until this all completely dries that way I can just lay it down and do it that way. I am going to use some tape. I'm gonna use some tape just to hold this in place. I hope it doesn't rip away the styrofoam. Okay, there we go. We're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back. Okay, now these are pretty well dry. We a couple hours and now we're gonna just post, put this, glue this right on top of the styrofoam here. Okay, we've let all of this fully dry. Let's see if it works. Are we on there? It's on there really good. These guys are on there. Everything looks really solid. It is a little bit front heavy because of this. Obviously, this is much heavier than the styrofoam, but that's gonna be okay because we're gonna be putting the rebar in the, uh, in the PVC pipes that we installed in here, so it's gonna be good. Yep, everything looks good. But now we're going to, we're just going to start marking some spots where we're going to make little cracks and give it some damage to the tombstone. We don't want this to be pristine. Let's carve those out really quick. Sound is. <clears throat> We're just going to go ahead and carve those out really quick. And uh, yeah, should be quick and easy. So we're just using the wood carving tool. Um, again, you know, this puts off fumes, so you know, wear a rest there. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I already said that, but super easy on this. Just going to basically just use the wood burning tool to burn and melt right through it. Yeah. Super easy. I use the backside for more smaller lines. Okay, you don't have to do it too much, just put some cracks on there and we're looking good. Uh, another option to age the grave or the tombstone is just using a heat gun and you want it, I mean, this reacts really fast in the foam on the styrofoam. So be very careful with this. Uh, I don't think I want to do too much, just a little bit. Just to give it a texture. You want to stay away from the letters. Um, this can really warp that, uh, the, the detail of the letters. Okay, that's it. We are ready to paint. Okay, so for painting, uh, you know, there's all sorts of advice and different methods to paint styrofoam and foam in general. Um, a lot of people think you have to seal this now for the weather because it's going to be outside, but this is styrofoam. These are pool noodles. They are actually very resistant to water. Uh, it's really, you know, you don't really necessarily have to use some sort of sealer. Um, so I'm going to, I bought some hoops paint just at, uh, at Home Depot or actually Lowe's. Um, it's just $15 for a full gallon and it's gray. So uh, I'm going to use this oops paint and paint the base layer on everything. And uh, once you put the base layer on, you can add, you know, sand or some other uh, 
you know, a lot, but basically just sand. You can add sand and that will give it kind of a, a stone texture. Um, I don't have any, I didn't really want to go to the store and buy any, so I, I do have dry lock. So I'm actually going to do a base layer with the oops paint and then I'm just going to stipple with the dry lock to give it a stone texture. Um, normally when I just use dry lock, you know, dry lock, I will do a base layer and then uh, do a second, you have to do a second layer and that layer is where you stipple it to get the stone texture. So we're just going to do the stippling on top of the oops paint layer and and see how that works. I think it's going to look good. Um, it should work great. But again, you can use sand if you want. Uh, I just have dry lock, so I'm going to use dry lock for the, the texture. Well, when I tested this inch paint at the at Lowe's, it looked like it was a lot darker gray. And if you look at the little dot indication, it's supposed to be gray. So this hoops paint has been sitting for a few weeks, and it. Uh, it's now basically pure white. I've mixed it as much as I possibly can, and it's essentially white. We'll, we'll still use it, and we'll darken it up a little bit with the dry lock, and then we'll just have to use some black washes to get into the cracks and crevices. And we're really just getting it everywhere. We don't really care. We're not, you, know, you can use a lot of this paint. It's very inexpensive. I don't know if this paint's going to stick to the cool noodles. I know that when I've painted them in the past with spray paint, they end up cracking. Um, so, uh, you know, they might crack later on, but you know, that just kind of gives it an aged look. So I'm okay with that, especially since the cool noodles are dark gray. So if it cracks, it's just gonna show through dark gray, which is just fine. I guess we are, we are going to do the back side as well. I mean, you don't have to, it should be pretty easy. There's not any detail. I just want to get a layer on here and uh, get this set up as well. Okay, so we let this uh, fully dry and uh, because it is so light in color, um, I really thought I was getting a lot darker gray. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just pre-paint some of the shadows. Hopefully, and be careful with this uh, because spray paint's going to completely melt your this type of styrofoam. So I'm hoping that this latex paint will provide a, a nice barrier. I just wanna kind of dust in the shadow areas. Um, I'm still gonna do another layer of dry lock on top of this, but I just wanna make sure that we've got darker shadows uh, before I put that layer on. Oops. It looks like it's melting through, so I think we're okay here. I'm really worried about the really worried about the letters, right? If this stuff melts, it will just completely warp and deform the letters. Okay, we are ready to put on the dry lock stipple layer. And, uh, you know, I know dry lock's pretty expensive. Um, I obviously tried to save some money by doing a, the base layer with latex loops paint. Um, but, you know what, one, of the, one gallon of dry lock is gonna last you a really long time. So, I did save a little bit of money by doing that, but really not much because it's, you know, this is not even going to cost $2 worth of um, dry lock for this. So, so to create the stone effect, all you're going to do is take the dry lock and just stipple. Because it's really thick and has a sandy kind of texture, it looks really cool. Um, so on the letters, I really want these to stand out. 
So I am gonna, I'm not gonna put a lot of um, dry luck on the brush. I don't want it to really get into inside letters. I want those to stay black. As much as possible. You can always touch it up with acrylic black paint afterwards or whatever. I think you get the picture, right? We're just doing all, stippling everything. Um, really like how the letters turned out with this. Uh, it actually, using those stickers uh, for stencils actually looks pretty good here. Um, I'm really happy with how that turned out. I was really concerned that was that we were gonna look stupid or not, uh, <laughs> not work well, but uh, I like that a lot. I think it's, actually really good so i'm just gonna finish doing the rest of these i mean we're just dry locking everything right and uh then we'll start age, trying to age this and color a little darker um with some spray paint we have finished all the dry lock on here and uh my thought is i am absolutely going to try putting sand in the oops paint for the texture. Uh, this took a very long time to stipple all of this. So um, for time saving uh, and money, I guess, I would definitely go with uh, sand in the oops paint. And uh, I'll certainly try that on my next one. In my next video, um, I got planned for another tombstone much bigger than this one. Um, so I'll probably try that method or that technique in that video. But uh, yeah, that's it. All dry locked up. Okay, the dry lock is all dry. And uh, now we're going to, we're gonna paint this guy. Um, I, uh, how I normally paint the stone uh, is with just some of my normal camel, pa camel paints. I've got a brown, khaki, and uh, this kind of moss green color here. And and then of course black as well. So we'll use flat black as well. And we do that just for kind of shadows, a little bit of different types of um, colors, give it a little bit of variation rather than just straight gray. And of course I'm gonna use gray too. Um, and then most of the uh, actual gray color comes from uh, our black wash. So for the black wash, I just use one eight ounce um, bottle of acrylic, black acrylic paint that I buy at the dollar store. And then I fill up the dollar store bottle with water and just a couple drops of um, dish soap. So really inexpensive. And that's for the most part, the majority of the coverage will be just this. So let's get started. I think we're good. Now we're going to do a box wash. Okay. I, uh, show you the top here. Obviously I'll have have to hit some of the sides and do that a little bit more in the top and the back, but uh, that's just that, look, that black wash just <laughs> makes it look so cool. Um, really interacts with the different shades of paint that I just sprayed on it, and uh, yeah, we're pretty much done with that paint job. Now we're gonna do the do the contact cement and put some put some moss on here. Okay, so it's uh, completely dry here. I could I could stop right here. Um, this looks fantastic. Uh, you don't have to do this whole next step, um, but I'm planning to do use barge uh, cement, contact cement, and we're gonna use blow dryer. And I'm gonna try to, similar to like corpsing techniques I use, I'm gonna try to create some cobwebs and then put some 
just Spanish moss, just add a little bit, I think, uh, of aging to it. And uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I don't ruin it. Okay, for the uh, the barge here, I've got just a throwaway chip brush. Get these at the dollar store, super inexpensive. And then I save these caps from all my great stuff foam. And uh, these work great as a throwaway, putting uh, some a little bit of this barge cement into this cap. Okay, now I'm going to use some Spanish moss I got at the dollar store here and dangle some of this off. Then we're going to use just uh, regular moss as well. Right. I think uh, I think we're done. I actually like that. I think that looks really cool. These cobwebs are probably going to stay too. That rubber cement will harden, and uh, and those should stay. And so should the moss that should stick and dry right into this contact cement that I put on here. And we're good. And here is the final product. Easiest DIY tombstones for less than 10 bucks. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring that bell to get notifications anytime we put out new content. If you'd like to support our channel, please click the thanks button and join the membership link in the description. I thank you for watching, and as always, happy haunting!